Now we've arrived at part 3 of the CN Toronto Bypass Project. In part 3, I'll take a look at the reconstruction of the Halton Sub from Burlington to Georgetown, the construction of Toronto Macmillan Yard and the York Sub, and through that process I'll walk through a timeline of the project and some associated pictures and such and dates and then I'll look at some overhead shots from taken during that time period of the York Sub and Macmillan Yard and some of the major structures that were built on the York Sub. In 1959, construction of the new line through Pickering, Markham and Vaughan Townships was given the go-ahead after overcoming claims and opposition as well as alternative route suggestions. In 1960, the House of Commons approved 87 million for the construction of the new yard. On May 31, 1960, an article appeared in a local Milton paper, The Canadian Champion. In that article, the mayor of Milton, Mayor Childs, reported to the town council at the time that CNR would be cutting passenger service. They were also at that time going to be cutting the line for the reconstruction project. The good news was that CN traffic was going to be increased through the area and freight service would be also increased. However, passenger service was coming to an end on this part of the CN network. The passenger service officially came to an end on July 2nd of that year, 1960. Previously, passengers rode on this very unique CN self-propelled passenger train known by many as a doodlebug. In the Canadian Champion of December 1st, 1960, the reroute of Milton CNR track was announced to handle about 25 trains a day. And on here you can see they have the diagram of the old line going through Milton currently. And then the dotted line is the new line that would kind of go around Milton. On March 8, 1962, an article in the Canadian Champion noted that the project was going to begin that spring once the weather cleared up. The railway line will remain roughly on the same level as it previously did with two exceptions. Through Milton, it would be 25 to 30 feet above the present level, riding on a berm. And north of Milton, at Esquisine's third line, it would dip 15 to 20 feet lower into the ground, making the grade more gradual and less undulating. In the photo seen here from the Milton Historical Society, in this overhead shot, you can see the new construction of the line going off in the bottom left part of the photo off to the left in the north. And then straight down, you can see the old line has been severed, but there's still rail cars in that and there for the construction and the Peel Robertson plant. And then the line goes up and crosses the diamond, which was there for a number of years after. So CN could still access that portion of the line. Moving south of Milton briefly, I just want to touch on a couple of points. The original Hamilton Northwestern line, which eventually became the CN, originally went across the what is known as the Beach Strip, along basically to the right of what is now the Burlington Skyway. And that line was there for quite a number of years. And in this, I believe, late 60s, early 70s shot of the Queen Elizabeth Highway at Stony Creek, there was a traffic circle. And you can clearly see the CN line going over it diagonally over two bridges. Of course, that's long gone today. The line now is a pathway through Centennial Park. And then moving over to Burlington, the uh, junction there was greatly changed for this project. There was always a, uh, a Y there. For there was a line coming from the strip from the south, as you can see here. Uh, this is, by the way, this is from uh, Charles Cooper's book, The Hamilton's Other Railway. And then the line going to up towards Milton and Georgetown, you can see it curving off to the north there. So here's a, a shot today from Google Maps, and you can quite clearly see the Y still. There's still a spur going south. It doesn't go that far. I believe it's for hydro. And then now you can see it's now a, a double track going up north of Burlington. And that double track goes for about 10 miles. And then it's all single track after that, all the way to Georgetown with passing tracks. The rail project actually drew a fair bit of criticism from the town of Milton for a, a couple of reasons. The one big issue they had was the high berm that the line was going to go on. Now, the one concession they did get is originally, apparently, the CNR was going to go over the 401 highway, which was also being built around that time. Um, however, the CN agreed to put it underneath the railway line, which it, as you go through Milton, you can see it does that today. And this is the article you see here in the March 29th, 1962 edition of the Canadian Champion. And then moving on, 
to the October 21st of that year of 1962. You can see that the, uh, the Milton Council was calling it the Great Wall of China. Um, it was a bit of an exaggeration there, but obviously they were quite upset that they felt that the uh, view of around the town was going to be blocked by this uh, huge wall built by the CN as they uh, constructed the rail line around the town. As I mentioned earlier, another area where the elevation was changed on the line was north of Milton, near Third Line Escocene. And in that place, the CN dug a, a fairly substantial cut so they could uh, smoothen out the uh, incline up part of the Niagara Escarpment. And here in the picture, in the August 30th, 1962 edition of the Canadian Champion, you can see that picture. It's not the clearest in the world, but you can see how they clearly have dug down quite a ways. Now, what that did, though, is it had a permanent effect on the road up there. Uh, third line, today when you go up there, it's it was severed. So the old third line, if you continue north of 10th Side Road, it's a dead-end road. So when you get to 10th Side Road, you have to turn left and then turn right once you go over the train tracks. And in these photos here, you can see beyond my car, the, the road actually went, you can kind of see some ruts there. And that's where the road originally went straight instead of curving off to the right. And the next shot here, you can see the road on the other side of the railway cut. It would have gone on a uh, over the tracks on a level crossing in the days prior to the uh, reconstruction of the line. In the May 30th edition of the Canadian Champion, CN ran into a bit of a snag at this very spot. Unbeknownst to them, there was a 9,000 foot long water table. And when they were digging that uh, cut, they hit it and it flooded the area. In order to solve the issue, they came up with a plan. Basically, they put in a bunch of piping with holes in that to drain the uh, water out of the area and down into a branch of the 16 mile creek. But this did indeed delay the project for a while. The next couple of pictures show the progress of the line as it was being completed through Milton. The first is from a November 21st, 1963 picture from the paper, the Canadian champion. The first shot on the left there is the right of way being graded in that. Looking north on the left is the mill towers near Bronte and Main Street. They're still there today in uh, not in very good shape. The building is now closed. And then the next shot to the right, you can see that's just a bit further north on that same area. And from the berm, you're looking down onto the CP main line, which is going east towards Toronto, first through Milton, as the CN line would now go over top of the CP line instead of crossing it on a diamond. And then later on in June 18th, 1964, as the line is nearing completion, you can see the, the new line curving off to the right here as it heads south away from the 401. With the two tracks, the one is actually the main line, the other one is, is a passing track or a siding. And the track kind of curving off the left is part of what is the original alignment of the line. So that continued up there and then it still at that time crossed on the diamond over the CP and then so that CN could service the Peel Robertson plant. In 1964, CN was also in the midst of testing their new hump yard, which would eventually become Toronto McMillan Yard. And the interesting thing about this, from the pictures you can see here, are that they used their one and only train master number 2900 to do that testing. So not only did you have a, a brand new hump yard being tested, but you also had a one of a kind engine uh, doing the testing as well. In 1964, with the creation of the Halton subdivision, the former route through Milton is renamed the Milton Town Spur. The January 13th, 1965 edition of the Canadian Champion Know that the CM bypass was to open on the following Sunday, January 17th. On February 6, 1965, the first CN freight arrives at Toronto Yard. Train 308, a 64 car train hauled by three GP9s. On May 17, 1965, Toronto Yard was officially opened by the Federal Transportation Minister J.W. Pickersgill. On May 19, 1965, the Premier announces investment in a new commuter rail system. On March 28th of 1967, the first GO train set arrives at Willowbrook Yard, formerly part of CN Mimico Yard. And on May 23rd, 1967, GO train regular service begins. On August 30th, 1974, the diamond is removed across the CP line in Milton. CP will continue to service Peel Robertson with the connecting trap 
which it remains in place. And you can see it in this old picture here with the railway car sitting on that connecting track. CN continues to service the remaining industries north of the Diamond. In the early 80s, what is left of the old line, or the Milton Spur, is abandoned almost all the way to the 401. I don't have information on when the industry seen here, south of Steeles, near Martin and Ontario Street, was no longer serviced by rail. The remaining portion, known as the Milton Spur, still exists today and services both Taiga Lumber and Crawford Metals. Given the scope of this project so far, and the fact that this video is already a good 10 minutes long, I've decided to divide it into four parts instead of three. So the next one, part four, I will focus on the overhead period photos comparing to modern photos of the construction of the York Sub and Tron McMillan Yard. Thank you for watching an episode on railway history. If you have any aspects of railway history that you're curious about, feel free to reach out to me with your suggestions or questions. Also, if you like this video and are interested in seeing more historical content, please subscribe to my channel.